Hey YouTube, today we're going to put rear disc brakes on the 56 pickup. It already has a 1968 Camaro discs up front, so we're going to replace the drum brakes in the rear with a, a disc brake kit I bought off of Jags and replace the uh, wheel bearings and seals while we're in there. And uh, then we're going to get new wheels and tires. These rear wheels are a little too large for this back and when you put a load on it it uh, it rubs the inner fender and the friction has actually burned the paint in there so uh, we're gonna fix that as well all right step one uh, pull into the garage all right we got the car in the garage Got it up on jack stands, and we've got the two tires off. Uh, I'll pull these drums off and then pull the uh, differential cover off. Pulled the uh, first drum off, and these brake shoes are wet with oil. Not, feels like gear oil. Um, the uh, brake cylinder doesn't seem to be leaking brake fluid so uh yeah i'm replacing that uh baron and seal there anyway where it seems to be leaking from right here uh so this is a job that needed to be done anyway okay next step is to remove the bolts holding the diff cover on then we'll show how to remove the C-clip to pull the axle out. All right, we got the diff cover off and uh, there is a magnet here on the bottom of the diff cover. And it's got quite a bit of, uh, let's see if I can get a good picture here. And quite a bit of uh, metal particles attached to it along the bottom here. Um, I don't know what to compare this to. If anybody can comment on that, it would be appreciated. Back to the truck. Now that we've got the diff cover off, uh, we have to pull this bolt here out and drop this pin and then the shafts will be able to slide out. Okay, I removed the little retaining screw which is now right here and then this shaft just slid right out. Now I have to rotate this because there's a couple of C-clips in there that just hold that shaft in place. So I push the shaft in a little just to relieve the pressure, remove the C-clip and then the shaft comes out. Okay, easy enough. Here's the clip that was in there and it just slid right out and then the shaft just pulled right out from the wheel. So, Taking a look at this, this is definitely where the oil leak was coming from, and that seal is shot. So I have a new seal and a new bearing, so we'll be replacing both of those. Uh, next step is to disassemble all of this. I think I'll... Uh, Pull this seal and bear it off first. The rubber lip of this seal just wasn't even attached. I just pulled it right off the seal. And uh, so the seal was definitely bad. I'm gonna go pull the bearing now. All right, I don't have a bearing puller. If I have to, I'll go buy one. But I'm gonna try to make one. I'm going to take this uh, old steering wheel puller 
and uh, cut it down to the diameter of the bearing so I can get it in there behind the bearing. And then this bolt will be sticking out. And then I'll put this brace on. The bolt will come through here. And then as I tighten this nut up, it should pull the bearing right out. So let me go ahead and fabricate this, see if it works. Okay, I uh, cut the ends off this old steering wheel puller. So this is a this is one of the new bearings, and uh, it'll fit the edges. So hopefully I'll be able to weave this in and under the uh, bearing that's in there, and. Uh, with the bolt sticking out and pull that bearing out. Let's go give it a try. Okay, we've got the uh, wheel puller in the bearing, got a bolt here. I was gonna use this piece from the steering wheel puller kit, but my bolt's not long enough. I don't have a longer bolt. So I'm gonna use this lawnmower, uh, push lawnmower, it holds a blade, and it'll fit right there very nicely. It's actually a better idea. I'll put a big washer here and a nut. As I tighten that nut up, it'll pull that bearing right out. Famous last words, you guys, if it doesn't work, you guys will never see this part of the video. Uh. Okay, it worked all the way up until the very end when the bearing started hitting my uh, back in place. So now it's out to the edge. This will fit and this will give me the clearance I need to get that bearing out. So we'll, we'll replace this with this. And that's what it looks like assembled. Enough clearance for the bearing. Give it a shot. All right, the bearing came right out. It was on the verge of coming out anyway. So, uh, I don't know what that saved me, 20, 30 bucks, but uh, it worked well. It didn't take long to fabricate. All right, here's the new Baron. I will pack it with Baron grease and I will stick it in there and I will gently tap it in with this piece of galvanized pipe that actually fits 100% perfect. Um, I don't think that'll be a problem at all if I tap it in evenly. It's as good as anything. Okay, got the new bearing in and it's seated when I was uh, tapping it in gently. Um, it gave a very solid sound when it bottomed. Uh, just to double check it, I'm going to take the uh, shaft and put it in there and make sure the c-clip fits and it fits properly and then i'll put the seal back on and then uh, we'll disassemble all of this and uh, start to the uh, start to assemble the disc brake kit by the way i got smart and uh put gloves on after i had some lunch we won't make such a mess all right got most everything off uh this is loose. Uh, hopefully this doesn't have to go back together and I can get the disc brakes to work. But uh, these old um, pads are thoroughly oil soaked. So they're definitely not going back on. All right. All right, we got the... Uh, back and plate off and we're left with the uh, axle. All right, I did a little research and I ordered the wrong kit. Um, you know, I don't have to drill the four holes. It's, it's uh, this is a G body GM rear end after doing a little research and they sell a kit specifically for this configuration. So, I went to jegs.com, logged in under my account. Five minutes later, I had a return label printed and I had the new one on order. I guess that's uh, 
you know, when you when you deal with a quality outfit, uh, that's the kind of service you get, which is really good. Um, so I'm on a hold pattern right now. I, I guess I'll go over to the other side and put in the new Baron and Seal. I won't video that since we've already seen it on this side, but uh, yeah, we just have to wait for the new parts to come in. Okay. Quick update while I'm waiting for the parts to come in. I cleaned the gasket surface, on both the differential and the cover. And uh, I'm gonna paint the cover. I dropped the drive shaft, uh, four 7 16 bolts. And I marked the drive shaft first, so I'm gonna put it on exactly the same position that it came off in. And uh, I'm gonna put a new pinion. I, I ordered a new pinion seal. So I'm gonna be taking that pinion off when the seal comes in and, uh, and replace that seal back there. It was dripping a little bit. So uh, waiting for parts to come in. Meanwhile, uh, I'll get this thing painted. Got the pieces cleaned and painted. All right, my new brake parts came in. I need to uh, put this on and bolt this on right there. And uh, they supply, th these were six millimeter tapped. This one sheared off. But either way, both of these need to be drilled out to a quarter inch or so to uh, clear a 7 16 bolt. What, I'll look up what the, what the clearance is for a 7 16 bolt, but I've got uh, cobalt drill bits because I find steel on this car is very hard, although this did come off of a 78 Malibu, the rear end. Okay. All right, so we got the shim, this bracket put on, and then the uh, caliper bracket fit on the back. So we put this uh, big nut on the other side, and these two 9 16 bolts with spacers in between and tightened all of those down. All right, I'm gonna slide the axle back in. I just uh, put an extra amount of grease in between the seal and the bearing and repacked it in the bearing a little bit just to make sure we have plenty of grease. So I will slide this back in and then uh, put the C-clip back in here. All right, got the disc in place. Got two bolts holding it, it's it's properly seated. You can see that through there, the inspection holes. And now I'm gonna put the caliper on, the left-hand caliper, and uh, I've got a 3 8 Allen to do that. And uh, it goes here. And uh, I guess what I'm gonna do first is clean all the uh, Cosmoline off of this, uh, both sides of this rotor. Okay, an interesting tip, anybody who's uh, installing these, um, this brake pad wasn't quite seated properly. Uh, it wasn't going in enough. And the reason was this little extrusion here needs to fit in that hole right there. And this thing was out of position by about a sixteenth of an inch. So I had to loosen this nut, carefully turn this, and then tighten the nut back up again. And now the brake pad aligns properly and I think I'll be able to get it in. And one other tip, I put a little uh, anti-seize lubricant uh, here and here where these things pivot. off the excess. Okay. All right, before I go any further, I'm gonna replace this pinion seal on the rear of the differential, on the front of the differential. 
because it's supposed to be 10 inch pounds of torque without the brake. So I might have to take that caliper off again. So let me go ahead and pull the yoke and uh, get that old seal out of there, get the new one in. Well, for what it's worth, I uh, had to break down and get the compressor out and the impact gun because it's the only way I could get the nut off. All right, now with the yoke off, I'm gonna pull this seal out, pry it out, put the new seal in and put it all back together. This, with that nut, spins at 10 inch pounds of torque. And you put it back together. I also marked where the nut was before, and I marked the nut so it should stop at approximately the same position it was before. I'll clean all this up a little better too. All right, we got the old seal out. Wasn't too hard. Got to order a new one. The one I ordered is the wrong size. So uh, I measured this one. I'm gonna go online and get a new one. All right, getting ready to put the new pinion seal back in. And uh, I thoroughly cleaned the uh, yoke on the inside. I'll put a little uh, RTV in here and uh, a little around the perimeter here. The RTV of choice for me is the Yama Bond. Uh, I do notice that on the yoke, there's a, uh, zoom in here there's a couple of uh there we go there's a couple of uh indentations and uh i burnished this with 800 sandpaper but uh it's probably the two places on the seal where it rides and uh i'm gonna put this together if it if it leaks i'll get a new yoke but uh, hopefully it won't leak, but there's definitely indentations here on this shaft. Okay, let's put this thing together. All right, we got it all assembled. I've got the, uh, pretty darn close. I've got, you know, this mark was here and I did a cold chisel here and a cold chisel here. So it's just a hair tighter than it was before. I had a heck of a time figuring out if I had the right number of threads exposed because there was all, still a lot of grease on the old one. And it turns out I took the camera angle last time from here. So uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, this is the same number of threads that I had before. And uh, I did put just a regular socket on here the uh you know breaker bar and it's really tight so and this is supposed to spin with 10 inch pounds of torque and it feels right i don't have a 10 inch pound torque wrench but i think you know based on a, a, what a lot of other people do is they just do these uh two marks and Tighten it back up to where it was, so I feel pretty confident we're good to go. I'll put the drive shaft back on. All right, this is the driver's side back wheel, and uh, I just had to take the whole thing apart. I had the caliper over here the first time. I This thing didn't come with instructions. I couldn't get it written instructions. I went by a YouTube and uh, they had it wrong. The caliper needs to go on this side and uh, the emergency brake cable goes through this way. And uh, hopefully that'll help somebody out. But uh, added a couple hours. I already had the diff cover on and the oil filled. And uh, I had to take all that apart, take the axles back out again and flip the brackets. All right, on to uh, the emergency brake cables. Uh, the old ones won't work. The new ones that came with the kit won't work on my application. So 
So I'm going to measure for new emergency brake cables. All right, we've got everything installed. We've got the uh, brake line hooked up. I put a new proportion in valve in that's designed for rear disc brakes and I bled the brakes. And uh, I think I need to wrap this video up. It's getting a little long. The next step is uh, to put on the linear actuator electronic park and brake. So I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. And, uh, but this was a, a good job done. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Bye.